we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, at this moment, we just want to worship God right where you are. You just lift your hand and just say, thank you, Lord. I want you just to be thankful. I want you to be grateful to what God is doing in your life. We just want to thank the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord that we have a name that is above every name. We thank God that some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. I just want somebody right where you are, the Bible say, they that trust in the Lord, they shall not be brought to shame. I want you just to lift your voice and just begin to thank God. God has been with us through thick and thin. We thank the Lord that we are still standing. We thank the Lord that his name, his name is a great tower and we can run and hide. We want to thank the Lord that God is on our side. Who can be against us? I want us to just lift our voices right where we are and just bless the Lord and just bless the Lord. Bless him in your own language. Bless him with your own understanding this very day in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a musician who sang a song and that says, Amazulu. I just want you to bless the Lord this morning. I just want you to know that there is a name that is above every name. I just want you to know that your help is closer than any other person's help. I just want you to know that God is close to you this morning. I just want you to bless the Lord right where you are connecting from. I just want you to begin to bless the Lord. The psalmist to say is bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name these are the times and the days where we must learn to bless God where we must learn to praise the Lord where we must learn to honor the Lord where we must know that it is not that we are wise, that we are alive. It is not out of our intelligence or our wisdom, but it is by the grace of the Lord. Therefore, I want you without shame. I want you without doubt. I want you without apology to lift your hands right where you are and just begin to bless the Lord. As we are blessing the Lord, something is happening. The musician wrote a song that says, when praises go up, his blessings come down. They are times when we just need to bless the Lord right where we are and we are not ashamed of it. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord bless you. Lord, we thank you this morning. We bless you this morning. Thank you for your presence and thank you for your glory all over the world. Thank you, Lord, for the move of God everywhere on earth. We thank you for the protection of the Lord. Father, we are here, not because we are wise, but Lord, your hand has been heavy upon us. We thank you, Lord. You say it in your word, you will never leave us nor forsake us. You are a faithful God and we we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus right where you are in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you this morning to our Sunday morning service. The good Lord bless you. Wherever you are connecting from, you can actually show us where you are connecting from and indicate the nation, the country where you are, so that when we pray, we also know that there's somebody in Zambia, there's somebody in Switzerland, there's somebody in the UK, there's somebody in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, wherever you are, we begin to pray because there is a new move of God that is touching nations. There is the move of God. The hand of God is everywhere. We are praying for for a revival and anyone who has got a spiritual temperature, a, 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 a spiritual thermometer, you are able to measure the revival temperature that is taking place. Other people think that we are on lockdown, but what they don't know, we are in the secret place with the Most High and we are discussing the secrets of heaven and very soon there is a breaking forth of revival that will be unstoppable. Maya Kato, there is a breaking 
formed of believers that will be unstoppable. People who move on faith. People who do miracle signs and wonders. People who rebuke sickness and sickness go. People who live a holy and righteous life without an apology. There is a move of God that is brewing all over the world. And we decree and we declare every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Rapture is about to be announced. The trumpet is about to sound. But before the trumpet sounds, before the trumpet sounds, there is a revival that is going to take the nation by the storm. We bless the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that is joining in, everyone that is logging on, the good Lord bless you. I promise you one thing, you'll be blessed. I promise you one thing, the power of God is invading the place you are listening from. Even it can be your house or in your car or wherever you are, or wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, I decree and I declare the power and the grace of the Lord is coming into your place. I can tell somebody who's listening listening to me right now. There is a fire that is starting in the inside of you, in your heart and in your spirit. Something is being stirred up. And I want to say to you, that's the move of the Lord. I decree and I declare everyone hearing the sound of my voice and you are sick in your body. I command that sickness to go. I command the sickness to let loose of your body. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God to invade your body. I command healing from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I command cancer to go. I command HIV to go. I command COVID-19 to go. In the name of Jesus, I command your knees to be loosed, your back to be loosed by the power of God. Every demonic spirit and power are infusing sickness in your body. I command it right now to let you go in the name of Jesus. We are getting to the word of the Lord right now. We are still on the series, A Holy Generation. Today we are dealing with part six, Holy Generation number six. The good Lord bless you. In this time and this season, we thank God. We thank God for a holy move. We thank God for a holy generation. I don't know where you are hearing me from. I want you not to be ashamed. I want you to decree and to declare, I am part of the holy generation. I am part of the holy movement. Before Jesus manifests again, God is raising a holy movement. There is a movement of holy beings that is going to manifest on the planet Earth in the name of Jesus Christ, young and young men and women that are, shall arise in power and walk as God walked and walk in the ways of the Lord. The Bible says a highway shall be created. In that highway, even a fool will never be lost. It's called the highway of holiness. We are living in the days, in the days of the hour of the glorification of the church. These are the days when the church of God is being beautified. These are the days when God is enthroning the church to move in power, to move in wealth, to move in glory, in splendor, in influence, and in dominion. Not for her sake, but that she may become a magnet to many souls. Oh, Yamaha. So that many souls may come to the kingdom. God is lifting up the church. God is enthroning believers to high places, not for their own glory, but such that they may become an influence for soul winning. I decree and I declare, these are the days for serious soul winning. As I taught you last week, the greatest investment of heaven is in souls. The greatest inheritance of heaven is in souls. The soul of a man is so precious. The soul of a man is priceless. Heaven, Maya Katela Mahashe, heaven is serious on soul winning. The reason why Jesus died 
Jesus came and he was crucified. He died and he was buried. And he rose up on the third day. It was to restore back souls unto God. I want to decree and declare all over the world. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice. These are the days to go back to God. I say back to God Africa. I say back to God Europe. I say back to God Asia. I say back to God America. These are the days to go back to God. God is in the hands of the souls of a man. And God is enthroning his church in power. So that they may attract souls back to the kingdom. What I want you to know is, because God is exalting us, because God is lifting up the church, then that becomes very dangerous. Because now the church becomes the enemy attacks the church. Because the enemy knows that God moves through the church to win souls. So what the enemy will try to do is to dethrone the church. The enemy will try to do to disgrace the church. The enemy will try to, to bring the church down through the power of sin. Because the enemy has got only one weapon. The weapon of Lucifer is one. He has been using sin from the garden up to revelation. Even up to this time, the devil's power is in sin. I want to say to every child of God, when God begins to lift you up, you are supposed to be cautious now. You are supposed to be careful how you walk. You are supposed to be careful how you live. When you realize grace is heavy upon your life, anointing is oozing upon your life, you must know you are treading on dangerous ground because the enemy is after you. Because he knows if he doesn't get you, then many people will be turned unto God. I just want to say to every believer, these are the days of power. These are the days of wealth. But when wealth locates us, it is not for our pride. It is for us to create kingdom, a grace and kingdom avenues for people to come to God. It is for us to do great crusades and revivals for people to come back to God. It is not for us to be feeding ourselves but it is for us to do kingdom business. Your soul is so special that the heavens of the heavens they are strategizing and planning for your soul. Let's read the word of the Lord, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Maya katoke yema. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. The word of the Lord says, And it came to pass, sorry, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all the nations shall flow unto it. Verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and ye will teach us of his ways. Mayakaya. Time is coming when people will come and cry and say, teach us the ways of the Lord. And as we are doing, as we are teaching of the ways of the Lord, we are in syllabus of what the heavens are doing. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, Maya, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. These are the days for the exalting and the lifting of the church. These are the days of your yeah, glorification. The only thing that exalts a person, the only thing that exalts a family, the only thing that exalts a community, the only thing that exalts a nation is holiness. Africa, when Africa will begin to walk in holiness, Africa will be exalted. When Zimbabwe will begin to walk in holiness, Zimbabwe will be exalted. When America will begin to walk in holiness, America will be exalted. My God, my God, holiness is a lifter, holiness is a promoter, holiness is special, holiness is beautiful. Have you ever, my God, encountered a holy person? 
Have you ever encountered a holy person? A holy boy or a holy girl? My Yandoko Yamaha. A girl or a boy who is operating in holiness, who is walking in the fear of the Lord, who is walking in the love of Jehovah. They are oozing with life. They, they have a bright face, Ayabaha. They are full of energy and power. They are intelligent and confident. Anyone who is walking in holiness, when you look at them, when you encounter them, you can feel you have encountered somebody who is getting something. You sense they have a certain atmosphere. Their face is bright. Their face is shining. When you look, when you encounter a holy leader, even when they are on television, you can tell there's something about that man. You can tell there's something about that woman. There's fire coming out of their face. Their eyes are bright. Maya Kayende Kayama has Hey, my God. But when we look at sin, sin is a disgrace. Sin is an abomination. Sin is a killer. Sin is a demoter. Sin, sin is a delayer. When somebody is in sin, even their step is delaying them. When someone is in sin, they demote themselves. When you are in sin, my God, you don't need a witch. You bewitch yourself. When you are in sin, you don't need anyone to poison you. You poison yourself. My, have you ever encountered a Christian who is living in sin? They are confused. Even when you look at them, they are dejected. They are depressed. They lack confidence. Their faces are dull. It's like they are sick. They are When they laugh, it's like they are crying. When they are among others, it's like they are naked. Hey, my God. They feel contempt. When they are among us, the holy. It's like, my, they have no clothes on them. They are empty in the inside. Shame manifests even in their teeth. Elema Sakata. I decree and I declare, that's not your portion. You are the child of the Most High God. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a sanctified person. Power manifests in your life. You are lifted up by holiness. You are a different person. Holiness is special. The devil can never be holy. Holiness is special. Demons can never be holy. That's why you see demons are dull. Demons, they move from gray to darkness. They are never bright. They are never glorious because they are in sin. But the children of God, they are brilliant. Their faces are smiling. They have power. Let me, let me, let me, let me talk to you. Sin is a depressor. Anyone who is in sin, they are depressed. Even when you look at them, they look like a demon. Hey, my God. Allah, I hate sin with a passion. I hate sin with every amount of power in the inside of me. Because if it wasn't for sin, we were never going to die. If it wasn't for sin, we were never going to be sick. Today we are fighting sicknesses. It is because of sin. Now we are fighting COVID-19. It is because of sin. Before sin, all these things were not there. I know you love sin, but you had you sickness. You are a confused person. The issue is sin. Sickness is no problem. If there was no sin, there would be no sickness. If there was no sin, there would be no death. Our problem is sin. Our challenge is sin. I say to somebody, kill sin before it kills you. Shame sin before it shames you. In the name of Jesus, if you hear me, say yes, 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 yes. If you hear me and you are a holy generation, say thank you, Lord, you have delivered my life. I will never face shame again. Hele Mahashi. The greatest enemy of humanity is not sickness, it's not the pandemics, it's not the challenges that people are facing. The greatest challenge of humanity is sin. I try to imagine in Africa, black people without sin walking in holiness. 
I can assure you, this continent will be different. But the enemy has taken over. Sin is everywhere. Shame is everywhere. Sickness is everywhere. Embarrassment is everywhere. Proverbs 14:34. God bless you. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Haya baba ba maka reketele maha. The Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. Haya mahashe. Righteousness exalts a continent. Righteousness exalts a person. Righteousness exalts a family. Righteousness exalts a church. Righteousness exalts a people. But sin is a disgrace to any people. It is a disgrace to the whites. It is a disgrace to the blacks. It is a disgrace to the colored community. It is a disgrace wherever sin is. Sin has no color. The color of sin is shame. The color of sin is disgrace. The color of sin is dis depression. Sin is a demotor. But holiness exalts the people. People of holiness are exalted. People of holiness sit in high places. People of holiness... I a powerhouse, my God in heaven, my God in the heavens. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I raise you on high. My Bible says, Elemahashe, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Can I say it? Can I say it? I am a Hashem. You know why you have to hide when you are sinning? It's because it's a disgrace even to you. You cannot do it in front of your children. You can't do it in front of your relatives. You have to hide. It's a sign. It's a disgrace. It's a sign. It's a disgrace. Holiness is a power booster. Holiness is an anointing booster. Holiness is a glory booster. Holy people are power people. They walk in miracle signs and wonders. They live a life of favor without fear or apology. Holiness is a life booster. Holy people live long. Uh, Psalm 37, 29. Holiness is a peace and joy booster. Holy people are full of peace. Holy people are full of joy. Alama, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Holiness is a mind booster. Psalm 119, verse 97 to 100. Anyone who walks in holiness, they have all their senses in operation. But anyone who is in sin, they have lost their senses. Now, I want to give you 10 boosters of holiness or what can help you to live a holy life. Hallelujah. I trust my time will allow me to give you five, five or more points out of the 10 points. If you want to live a holy life, it's possible. It's possible. Holiness is a possibility. Hallelujah. These are the, the 10 things you must do. Point number one, repentance. Numbers chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. Numbers chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. So the first level when you want to live a holy life, the first thing, hallelujah, the first thing is to repent. So repentance is the first holiness booster. I'm just giving you 10 tablets to live a holy life. Some of us, we are living a holy life not because we live away from people. I'm everywhere. Every day I'm among his people. I'm in the marketplace. I'm everywhere. But that has not tainted my holiness. I just want to tell somebody who is here and you may not know it. Every area where sin brings you down, it has taken away a ceremony from you. You can't preach what has pulled you down. Hallelujah. That's why I find very few people preach about holiness. 
because they have been brought down by sin. So I want to empower you today. Point number one is repentance. Numbers chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. I love God. I love God. I love God. God says, as long as he lives, he's talking to the children of Israel. In other words, this was God's heart. This was God's mind about them. He says, my glory will fill the whole earth. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. I am a said, This is what God wanted to do. This is what God wanted to do for them. And now he says, but all those men which ye have seen my glory. Hey, hear me, you who are born again and you are playing around with grace. But all those men which ye have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and ye have tempted me now these ten times and ye have not hearkened unto my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither any of them that provoked me will see it. Let me tell you something. Sin is progressive. Sin grows. It starts as sin. When you continue sinning, it becomes temptation. You are now tempting God. When you continue sinning, it becomes provocation. And that's the end of you. I want to say to everyone that is here, the Holy Ghost has been rebuking you. The Holy Ghost has been talking to you about walking in righteousness and in holiness. As you continue in sin, it becomes a temptation to God. He says here to all those people who have seen my glory, seen my miracles, and what I've done in the wilderness, and they have tempted me, these ten times, in other words, every time you are sinning, heaven is recording. And what I want to tell somebody today, God's grace and mercy, they have a limitation. These guys, they went up to nine. But when they hit the tenth time, God says enough is enough. This is no longer sinning. It has passed from temptation to provocation. And when it becomes a provocation, you have wadokonya, wabaya muarimu ziso. When it becomes provocation, God gives up on you. That's why you hear one day, Samuel is praying about Saul. And God goes to Samuel and says, shut up. Stop praying about him. I have given up on him. Let me talk to you. When you sin for the first time, it is called the sin. And heaven is ready to forgive. But when you continue in the same sin, it's no longer sin. It's now temptation. You are now trying to see what God can do. You are now playing with the power of God. You are now provoking the Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible says, they are, they are people who provoke the Holy Spirit. If you continue now at provocation, the wrath of God comes upon you. I hear the Lord says, you sinned and I did not do anything about it. And you think we are the same. And you think I am of your age. I hear the Lord say to many Christians that are listening to me right now, your days are about to be numbered. Your numbers are about to hit the finality. You have taken me from sin unto temptation. How dare you? You have the audacity to tempt God. You have the audacity to provoke the Holy Ghost. And I want to say to you, I hear Eli say to his son, it is better when two people are fighting against each other because God may become may become the one who may cause them not to fight. God may become their intercessor. God may intervene in their business. But when a man makes up his mind to fight God, that's disaster. Because who will stand for him? Let me talk to Christians. When you continue in sin, claiming that it is grace, you are provoking God. You are tempting God. Oh, my God in the heavens. If you hear me say, Lord, have mercy. God's grace and mercy are limited. Continuity in sin frustrates his grace and mercy. Many people sin and realize that nothing is happening to them. They then 
do toothbrush repentance and again and again doing the same sin. What they don't understand is that God is counting. When you continue to sin, you graduate and graduate until you get to provocation. Let me talk to somebody that is here. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. Toothbrush sins are those sins that you, toothbrush confessions, are those confessions that you make in the morning after you have sinned and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me, I'm a child. I call on the blood of Jesus. I want what, what, I want what. Three days down the line, you are packing to the same thing and you are saying the same thing. I, the Holy Ghost was talking to me and he said, Continuity in sin is a destroyer of destiny. Tempting God is a dangerous thing. When your sin moves to temptation, you are treading on dangerous ground. And you have joined the ministry of the devil. The fact that shame and disaster has not stuck you, it is not a sign that God is against what you are doing. Repenting and turning away and never to do it again. Repenting with a true heart is the only thing that can save your life. Hayamahase, provoking the Holy Ghost over and over again. And you are saying God is forgiving you. Once you don't know, God is counting. One day, your number will come to an end. Uh, the Holy Ghost said to me, when somebody drinks poison by mistake, they are taken to hospital and the doctor saves their life. Everyone is sympathizing with them. Everyone is saying it was a mistake. But when they again take the same bottle and they drink from it, it is no longer a mistake, it's now a choice. It is no longer a sin, it's now a temptation. Because they already know that this is poison, but they are taking it in, the, in, in their lives. He said to me, that's why the Bible says, Cursed is a man who goes back to his vomit like a dog. Only dogs, they vomit and they eat what they vomited. But as a child of God, when you repent from your sins today and go back to them, you are worse than a dog because you have five senses, even without the Holy Ghost. And you have the sixth sense, which is the Holy Ghost. And you still, you have the seventh sense, which is holiness. And you still go back to your vomit. And the Holy Ghost says, it's no longer sinning. It's now temptation and when it goes from there it becomes provocation and no one can escape the wrath of God when God turns against you everyone will know let me talk to somebody that is hearing me I want you to try to make up your mind if you have decided to repent I want you to repent and never go back to it wherever you are hearing me I don't care what people have told you I don't care what they have said but I come with the word of the Lord. You can't continue drinking poison and hoping for God to save you. God has given you senses to decide. God has given you a will to decide. This is high time to make up your mind. I remember very well. There are songs we used to sing. 1981, when I got born again, we used to sing this song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Take away the whole world and give me Jesus. Where is that generation that shall say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Today we have Generations about the port and they are here today, they are there tomorrow. They say we want to follow God at the same time, they are following the devil. I hear God say, You are tempting me, and your temptation has been too heavy. I am about to be provoked. You shall not see my glory. My design for you was glory, my desire for you was glory, my, my intention was glory, your destiny was glory. But because you are provoking me. You will not see my glory. So it's high time. Holy Ghost booster one is repentance from a true heart. Hallelujah. Repentance from a true heart. It's high time the church repent. It's a high time people of God repent. Can I challenge every preacher, every minister of the word? I don't know what you call yourself. You may call yourself... Whatever prophet, whatever apostle, whatever pastor, whatever bishop or reverend, it's a high time you repent before the provocation arrives. God bless you. Point number two. Let's clean up 
our hearts and our minds. Booster number two. Clean up your heart and your mind. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Booster number two. Clean up your heart. The most dangerous, wicked, and destructive sins, they are the sins, the secret sins of the heart. The dangerous thing that humanity carries is their heart. The Bible says it is deceitful above all things. The foolishness of the heart is that it thinks that no one knows what is hidden in the inside of it. As long as it's hiding it from the sight of people, it then concludes that no one knows, but God knows everything. Point number, the next point on the heart. What makes the Holy Ghost to be grieved? The Bible says, grieve not the spirit of the Lord. But what grieves the spirit is the sins of the heart. Oh, yeah, but the Holy Ghost was saying to me, what hates him the most is that sins of the heart, they stink in his face. Why? Because the Holy Spirit stays in our hearts. So when we are hiding sins in our heart, we are like somebody who takes a dustbin from outside with stinking pork meat and they put it in your bedroom. So what we are doing when we are putting our sins in our heart, this is where the Holy Ghost stays. Don't you know what the Bible says? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost stays in our body, in our heart. So when we hide our sins in our heart, we are exposing them to the Holy Ghost. We are saying to the Holy Ghost, we don't care that you are holy. We don't care that you said we should be holy. This is what we are doing. We are hiding it from the world, but we are bringing it into the room where the Holy Spirit stays. And our sins, they stay stink to the Holy Ghost. They stink in the heavens. Just like the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. God says the stinking of the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, they have arrived in heaven. You know why? Because they were hiding them in their heart. Somebody hearing me right now, your heart is beating because you know the things that you have been hiding in your heart. And I hear the Holy Ghost say, I am grieved because of the things you are hiding in your heart. The heart of a man can hide a lot of nonsense. Right now, many people, they have two hearts. The, the people of long ago, they had only one heart, which was the heart of flesh. But now many people have two hearts. The other one is called the heart. The other one is called a cell phone. They are things they are hiding in the memory. There is all dirt they are putting there. Somebody's heart is called the computer. They are laptop. They are putting things there. And they think the Holy Ghost does not know it. When you stand up and lift your hands to worship, the Holy Ghost is, can only hear stinking everywhere. When you are singing a song of worship, that's why I say to you, repent and the blood of Jesus washes you. Today we are about to take our heart into the laboratory of the, the blood of Jesus and we begin to wash our hearts. I grew up in a church where we used to sing a song that says, These are the days that our hearts hearts need a cleansing and a refreshing because there's too much nonsense in our hearts. There are a lot of dark sins in our hearts. Some people have committed abortion. Only their hearts knows about it. Some people they have committed murder. Only their hearts knows about it. Some people have committed adultery. Only their hearts knows about it. Some people have stolen money at their workplace. Only their hearts knows about it. But it's high time for cleansing. It's high time we clean our hearts. If we are to walk a holy walk, we need to clean our heart. There is so much nonsense in our heart. This is where we plan matter. This is where we plan evil things. We imagine them in our heart. We imagine them in our heart. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Our challenge is our heart. Our challenge is not the devil. Our challenge are not demons. But our hearts are not right before God. Oh, Jesus. And the one thing that provokes the Holy Spirit about our hearts is that most of people who sin, you hear them not say, 
God knows my heart. They actually know that God knows the nonsense that is in their heart. But what they're actually saying is that we are above God. He knows our heart. He knows what we are. What a provocation to God. What a tempting to God. You have the audacity to say God knows my heart. When you know Uchi, your heart is tutu mangovuvi. When you know that your heart is thinking. When you know that your heart is getting such kind of things. You have the audacity to stand against the people and begin to speak. Speaker, this weaker and wicked and poor vocabulary that God knows my heart. Hey, hear what God says. He says, everyone that has provoked me shall not see my glory. I'm here to say to somebody, these are the days to repent. These are the days to go before God with our heart and say, God, wash me. And say, Lord, cleanse my heart. Oh, this is my prayer this morning. May God cleanse our heart. May God cleanse my heart from every hidden secret of sin. Where I have accommodated the devil. Where I have given the room to wickedness. May God cleanse my heart today. God, give me a new heart. I am Koyabahashia. I refuse and I refuse rebuke the heart of wickedness. A lot of people, they are putting on suits, but their hearts are filthy wrecks. Point number three. Hallelujah. Booster number three. Be around people who believe in holiness. If you want your holiness to increase, be around people who believe in holiness. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Hallelujah. Because of my time. Proverbs 13, verse 20. The Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. In other words, when you want to be wise, walk with wise people. When you want to be holy, walk with the holy people. When you want to be holy, go to a holy church. I have heard people say, hey, there is no perfect church. Hey, there is no holy church. Let me talk to you. If you have never heard your man of God preach on holiness, ever since you joined that church, it might not be a church. It might be a pastor's project. It might be a prophet's project. It might be an apostle project. Because any kingdom project, any church of God, we have to tell each other, I pursue peace and holiness without which no one shall see God. We are raising people for heaven. We are not raising people for our own business. We are not raising people for our own names. Anyone who doesn't preach holiness is a dangerous person to follow. If you want to boost your holiness, walk around people that are talking holiness, that are believing in holiness. My God in heaven, if you come to World Wealth International, you will hear even Sunday school, they will be talking to you about holiness because we believe in it. We have embraced it. We know it is the only way for heaven. We are not here forever. We are on our way to heaven. We are praying for rapture. We are saying Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Therefore, when you want to have a holy life, walk with people that believe in holiness. Talk to people who believe in holiness. My God in the heavens. Hallelujah. Talk to people who believe in holiness. My God. I'm one person, I'm one person, I don't, I, I don't waste time. If I realize that your walk and your talk, hallelujah, I've heard some people, I was talking to somebody, say, hey, I heard you in a nightclub. Then they started answering me, they said, even Jesus ate with tax collectors, are you Jesus? I want to say to somebody, you did not eat with them in a nightclub. I want you to know, the Bible says a companion of fools shall be destroyed. 
you have to choose the people. You have to choose the language. When you hear people who have a poor language, a poor vocabulary of holiness, run away from such a kind. My Bible is clear. It says there are certain people whom we must, we must, we, 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 we have to avoid. We have to, uh, yeah, yeah. the Bible says mark them. We have to put a mark on their forehead that disaster going somewhere to happen. They as I hear people, foolish people, they have, they have such kind of poor and very, very weak vocabulary. Like Jesus act with text collectors. And you find them dressing like sinners, talking like sinners, playing sinners music. And they say, we are trying to win the world. I'm saying to you, if you are going to do everything and you say you are Jesus, when are you going to be crucified on the cross? Say so that those sinners, they might know that somebody is dying for them. I'm here to say to you this very day, it is a season. It is a time that you choose the people you have to hang around with. The Bible says, I want to say it in Shona, because it is not written in any language. The Bible says, Evil companionship destroys good character and good manners. Check out your character today. What has destroyed your character? It is evil communication. Number four, number four, number four. You must be hungry and you must desire to be holy. Matthew 5, 6. Matthew 5, 6. Matthew 5, 6. Hell, Emma, I think I'll end on 5. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If the Bible says... Righteousness has to be hungered for. You have got to be thirsty for it. You have got to desire it. You have got to long for it. It means that's still the same with holiness. You know why you are struggling to live a holy life. You are not hungry for holiness. You are not hungry for righteousness. But I pray today for a holy movement. I pray today for a holy generation. Young men and women that shall be hungry for holiness. That will refuse the natural food and say, I want I want to live a holy life. I want to walk in holiness. When I'm doing my business, I will do it in holiness. When I am at my work, I will work with holiness. My God in the heavens, do I have somebody who says, yes, yes, yes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for holiness. You say, I am hungry. Do you know something? There is nothing that satisfies hunger, but only food. There is nothing that will satisfy holiness until you have embraced holiness. If you don't desire it, it doesn't happen. Because the Bible says that desires of the righteous shall be granted. So whatever I desire, I shall be given. If I desire a holy life, I will live a holy life. You know why the world cannot live a holy life? They don't desire. They desire sin. That's why you find they are in sin every day. But somebody who will desire holiness, you think holiness, you research holiness, you look for people who walked in holiness, you listen to preachers who walked in holiness. You walk around people who walked in holiness. When you desire it, it happens to you. I challenge a generation and I, I say unto you, you shall be known as somebody who was hungering and thirsting after righteousness and you shall be filled. I decree and I declare wherever you are, you shall be known as a righteous man. You shall be known as a holy man. You shall walk in holiness. You shall attract the angels. You shall attract the angels counters. You shall attract revelation. You shall attract the mysteries of God. You shall attract heavenly peace. Because holiness is a magnet to supernatural things. The last one I'm going to give you today. Hallelujah. You must announce it. <laughs> you must say it. Hallelujah. Announce holiness. Advertise it. Oh, hallelujah. How I love God. Put it on your status. I am a holy man. I am a holy woman. Let me tell you my secret. Over the years, I remember 1991, I got employed by a certain bank. There, I was working with white people, colored Indians, black people. So the day I arrived, the manager called people in the morning to introduce me. 
and he said, we have a, a new employee that has joined us today. Then I was very handsome and, and good looking and fresh. And, and when there were women, young women and everyone that was looking at me, I realized I might be brave to them. So I also took an advantage there. I introduced myself. I say, my name is Judge Dube. I'm born again. I'm spirit filled. I'm a child of God. I live a holy life. I am not looking for a girlfriend. I am satisfied. I live a holy life. I'm not a sinner. I don't lie. I don't steal. Before I finished, the whole banking hall erupted in laughter. Some people, they fell on the ground laughing at me. They asked me, where are you coming from? And I told them where I was coming from. They said, my brother, you have come to the city of light. You have come to the city of life. We are giving you three months. You will be like one of us. But I thank God that it is more than 30 years and I'm still not like one of them. I'm still standing by my word that I am a holy man. I'm still standing by my word that I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I'm still standing by my word that I'll not cheat on my wife. I'm still standing one by my word and some of them they've already joined me they are also preachers they are now also the children of God I want to say to you whatsoever you don't announce it means you are ashamed of it whatsoever you don't announce you can't receive it because the Bible says whosoever shall say he shall have so whatever you say that's what you have if you say I am a holy man you become holy if you say I am righteous you become righteous therefore I invite everyone today let us go on our Facebook and just begin to decree and to declare hashtag a holy generation and everywhere we are let's announce to the world that we are a holy generation when you say it it becomes a hedge that protects you when people look at you they say this is a holy young man when people look at you they say this one is a man of God I am not ashamed that I am a holy man I am not ashamed that I preach righteousness I am not ashamed ashamed that the devil is scared when I arrive. I am not ashamed because I speak a language that is dusty in the ears of angels. I speak a language and the vocabulary that pleases heaven. I want to say to somebody today, this week we are all announcing who we are. We are decreeing and declaring our position. I am a holy man. When you say that the angels of the Lord, they come and they begin to surround you. Many people have never seen angels. I have been seeing angels in my life. From the day I decided to walk a holy life, angels are not invited. I know certain people invite them, but me, I see them without inviting them. So Sometimes I find them waiting for me in the car. Right now I'm preaching. There are three of them that are here. I love my answer. I thank God for that. Because when you are a holy man, you are also given holy, holy security. Holy people are protected by holy security. The good Lord bless you today. The good Lord bless you this week. It's a week of power. It's a week of glory. It's a week of the goodness of the Lord. It's a week where you shall experience God like never before. But just make up your mind. Go clean your heart. Go repent. Go live out people who have nothing to do with holiness talk and go and begin to decree and to declare your position and the good Lord shall be by your side. I would rather have people run away from me but have heaven coming down to me. I would rather attract heaven than attracting hell. I want to say to somebody that good Lord bless you. It's a wonderful time in the name of Jesus we are praying for you but we are also campaigning for a holy generation movement. We are campaigning campaigning for a holy people. We are advertising holiness. We are advertising heaven. We are advertising the glory of the Lord. We are advertising the goodness of God. And we are not ashamed about it. In the name of Jesus, the good Lord bless you. And the favor of God comes into your house. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.